In the last video, we saw that despite our line being infinitely thin, we could use it to fill in entire planes, boxes, and even cubes. However, at the end of the last video, I said that if you wanted to fill the entire square, you would have to cross over yourself somewhere at least once. This idea seems really surprising, but it's actually something mathematicians understand quite well. And to help us explain why, I'm going to start off by giving some intuition on the key words in the question, then I'm going to explain how functions can be used to define similarities on objects, and then finally I'm going to end with now the topological question of why can't a continuous function from 1D to 2D be onto and one to one. A function is an assignment from inputs to outputs, but these inputs and outputs don't need to be numbers. Last time, the input of our function was a time interval, meaning at every point in time in our interval, our function told us where to plot the point. A function was continuous in this case when all the points in the output fell nicely on a curve that you could then draw with a pencil. However, functions can take many forms. For example, we could have a finite number of dots be our inputs, and a finite number of dots be our possible outputs. Our function is an assignment of these inputs to outputs, so we can just represent them as arrows. Our task last time was to create an onto function, meaning a function that hits all of its possible outputs. This time, we're going to look at one-to-one -one functions, which are functions that don't output the same thing twice. In the finite case, we can see a one-to-one -one function is one where the arrows don't meet at the output. Now, if a function is one-to-one -one and onto, it means that we fill all our outputs, but we do it in a way so that no two inputs ever meet at an output. This means that each input has a unique output to go to. Functions with this property are extremely important because you can use them to interchange the inputs and outputs seamlessly. In fact, the definition of an invertible function is one that satisfies being one-to-one -one and onto. For example, in the finite case, a function can only be invertible if the number of inputs is equal to the number of outputs. This is how an invertible function gives us a similarity between our input and output. Okay, now, back to the function in question. We have a continuous one-to-one -one and onto function, but now we know this is really just a continuous invertible function. Just as invertible functions tell us that our input and output have the same size, continuous invertible functions tell us that our input and output have the same shape. In topology, we consider functions that input and output shapes like donuts, coffee mugs, spheres, and even circles. When there is a continuous invertible function from one object to another, we have a way to interchange the two shapes in a way that preserves the overall structure. But the shape of a donut is not the same as the shape of a sphere because the donut has a hole. So there does not exist a continuous invertible function between them. Okay, but our question is about the existence of a continuous invertible function from the number line to the coordinate plane. If one existed, then they would officially be of the same shape. But a line and a plane certainly don't feel like the same shape, and it turns out we can prove it. To show that a line and a plane are different shapes, what you have to do is remove a point from each one. If you remove a point from a line, we see that it disconnects it. But if you remove a point from a plane or a box, it stays connected. So these two are topologically different shapes. So because they are not topologically similar, a continuous invertible function can't exist between them. You can't exchange the points in a way that preserves their shape because they're different shapes. The truth is, when we talk about continuous functions, we're secretly talking about transformations between shapes. And a line is a fundamentally different shape from a square. And so there can only exist so many continuous functions between them. 
We use this fact to show that when drawing a square with a line, you must cross over yourself if you want to fill the entire thing. So there you have it. If you want to fill in a square with an infinitely thin line, and you want to hit every point, you're gonna have to cross over yourself at least once. Thank you for watching.